Good evening. This is lecture 16 covering the topic of liabilities. By this time, we will cover refundable deposits, our last topic, and uh, some problem solving exercises to further enhance your knowledge regarding the topic of liabilities. Refundable deposits. This consists of cash or property received from customers but which are refundable after compliance with certain conditions. Refundable deposits is present in some business enterprises. This is part of the business operations. This is part of dealing with customers. A refundable deposits in some instances are being required by some establishments in relation to the products or services that they are offering. So let's have some examples for us to fully understand what do we mean by refundable deposits in accounting and by the way these refundable deposits are liabilities in the point of view of the company who received the deposits. It is a liability. So let's have some example for you to fully understand the meaning of refundable deposit. So the first example is the refundable deposit on hotel check-in. This is a typical example and this is a liability in the point of view of hotel management. Try to to go to the ho to the hotel and uh, before you proceed with the check-in in not all but in some instances some hotels are asking for a deposit what is the reason? The purpose of this deposit is to ensure of an additional charge in case of food and drink consumption or any dam damages in hotel properties caused by the guest. In other words, this is just a contingency uh, measure on the part of the hotel in case uh, there will be additional charges or additional consumption on the part of the guest or uh, in some unavoidable circumstances there were some damages inside the room caused by the guest themselves this refundable deposit will be applied in actual scenario if nothing happens the refundable deposits will be returned to the hotel guest so that is the first example our second example of refundable deposit is the reservation fee in the acquisition of house and lot from a subdivision developer this is very common today especially if the unit in a subdivision or condominium that you are acquiring is very saleable in the market so the seller will ask some reservation fee and this is a refundable deposit the purpose of this is to assure the buyer that the unit of property was already earmarked to him or to her in other words, the seller of the unit, whether a house and lot or condominium unit, provides assurance to the buyer that it was already reserved to him or to her. Of course, this will be returned to the buyer if the purchase transaction was completed. The third example is about the one of the services being offered by banking institutions. 
and we call it deposit for keys. So if the client ought to open a safe deposit box, the bank will ask for a certain amount of money for deposit for keys. What do you mean by deposit for keys? Because every safe deposit box has a key that will be given to the account holder. And in case of loss, this deposit for key will be used for the replacement of that lost key. So this deposit will be returned to the account holder once the agreement was terminated. What do you mean by safe deposit box? Let me explain the meaning of this uh, safe deposit box. So here is the example. Here is the image of the safe deposit box. This is located inside the bank. The innermost part of the bank, if you are dealing with a branch, some branches have this safe deposit box. If you are a client of the bank and you have some important documents, jewelries, or other belongings that you want to be secured, you can open a safe deposit box to any bank of your choice. The safe deposit box is a fire proof uh, box just like a vault. It is made of steel and it can the, the documents or any belongings placed inside the safe deposit box cannot be destroyed by fire or by flood or any some calamity calamities that may affect the belongings inside the box you are very much secured the things or belongings the jewelries placed inside this box box including the documents the important documents like uh, land titles promissory notes agreements contracts you may put or you may place all those important belongings inside the safety deposit box when you open this uh, facility to the bank they will ask you for a deposit intended for the key because the key will be given to you you are the only one who can open this box nobody can open this it is only the account holder so the deposit for keys that you have given to the bank will be returned to you if your contract is terminated or if you do no longer want to avail of the safe deposit box facility. So that uh, deposit for keys is a liability on the point of view of the bank. So let's have an illustrative problem. And this is about Yumi Water Station. Yumi is a distributor of purified and mineral water in the vicinity. She asked her customers a total of 10,000 pesos as deposits for returnable containers. Everybody knows this kind of business. Purified and mineral water gallons of mineral water or purified waters are being sold to the customers and you are asked to make a deposit or deposits to the container for that uh, uh, purified or mineral water cost of the containers total 8,000 pesos that means the amount is spent in acquiring those containers is 8,000 pesos. Prepare journal entries under the following. Number one, recognition of cost of the containers. And number two, upon receipt of deposits for 
returnable containers number three upon return of the containers by the customers and number four the customers failed to return the containers so we will prepare journal entries for these four scenarios so let's take up the first one recognition of cost of the containers what is the entry we will recognize the expense debit cost of containers 8000 it will depend upon the company on the account title that they are going to use it depends on you on what a specific account title but in this case i use cost of containers this is an expense account debit cost of containers 8000 pesos and credit cash 8000 pesos again cost of containers is considered an expense to be included in your income statement number two requirement what is the journal entry upon receipt of deposits for returnable containers of course we will debit cash 10,000 pesos because according to the problem the the amount that we receive from the customers is 10,000 pesos so that is the amount of deposit and credit containers deposits 10,000 pesos so the containers deposits is the liability on the part of Yumi Water Station. Containers deposit is a liability because we have an obligation to return to the customers the amount of 10,000 pesos if they will decide not to avail of the uh, said products of Yumi Water Station. Again, we have or Yumi Water Station has an obligation to return the amount of 10,000. That is why it is a liability. Number three requirement. What is the journal entry upon return of the containers by the customers? Debit, containers deposits 10,000 pesos and credit cash 10,000 pesos so this is the reason why customer containers deposits are liabilities because we have an obligation to return in this case we returned to our customers the deposits of 10,000 pesos that is why we credited cash and we eliminated the liability of containers deposits amounting to 10,000 pesos. So number four, if the, con if the customers failed to return the containers, this is actually happy happening most of the time. The containers or the customers did, did not return the containers or they have no intention to return the containers. What will be the entry? David, Containers deposits 10,000. We will eliminate the liability and we will credit sales of containers 10,000 pesos. In other words, we will create a revenue. We will recognize the revenue of 10,000 pesos because the customers did not return the containers or maybe they have no intention to return the containers this is happening actually as far as this uh, business is concerned most of the customers are not returning the containers in that scenario we will uh, recognize the amount of 10,000 as a sales revenue and we will eliminate the containers deposit account which is a liability account
Yumi Water Station needs to prepare adjusting entries to recognize gain on the excess of deposits over cost of containers. The reason why we have to prepare an adjusting entry is that we have to recognize the gain. Remember, the cost in uh, acquiring the containers is 8,000 pesos. And then, we recognize the sale of containers of 10,000 pesos. So, 10,000 pesos is the revenue. The cost is 2,000. The, the cost is 8,000 pesos resulting in a gain of 2,000 pesos. So, we have to prepare an adjusting entry to recognize the gain. What will be the adjusting entry? Debit income summary 10,000 pesos and credit cost of containers 8,000 pesos. We will, we will close the expense of 8,000 pesos and then we will credit or, or we will recognize the gain on excess of deposits of 2,000 pesos. So this adjusting entry is to be prepared at the end of the accounting period just to recognize the gain on excess of deposits. Let's proceed to our problem solving exercises and we uh, we will use the problems in our textbook. These problems are prepared by the International Accounting Association and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. So let's have problem 1-8. This was prepared by the International Accounting Association. So, Burma Company disclosed the following information about its liabilities at year end. The first one is accounts payable. After deducting debit balance in suppliers' accounts amounting to 100,000 pesos. So, the amount of this accounts payable is 4 million pesos. Let me explain that debit balance. We are talking here of a liability account. We are talking here of accounts payable. Our accounts payable has a balance of 4 million. That 4 million is the balance of the general ledger. Out of the general ledger, we have various subsidiary ledgers per supplier one of the subsidiary ledger has a debit balance of 100,000 pesos so that debit balance is an abnormal balance for a liability account so here you can have an idea how we are going to treat the customers or the suppliers debit balance of 100,000 pesos. Is it possible for an account payable to have a debit balance? What do you think are the possibilities for an account payable to have a debit balance? The most common possibility is that we may have an overpayment to our supplier or there may be some error in preparing journal entries. But most probably, we may have an overpayment. That is why that overpayment resulted to debit balance in accounts payable. Next, we have accrued expenses of 1,500,000. These are the expenses recorded by Burma Company, but in reality, it is not yet paid. And then we have credit balances 
of customers accounts of 500,000 pesos. Let me explain. Customers accounts, meaning we are talking here of accounts receivable, not accounts payable. So our accounts receivable here resulted to credit balance of 500,000 pesos. Is it possible? The answer is yes. And what is the possibility? What is the most common reason why there is a credit balance in customers' accounts? The reason is that there may be some over collections from the customers. Because when you collected from the customers, the entry is debit cash credit accounts receivable. So there may be an over collection that is why your accounts receivable resulted to a credit balance and that is an abnormal balance. The second reason or the second probability is that there may be some errors in recording transactions. Next, share dividend payable of 1 million pesos. So let's have a review of our corporation accounting. Share dividend payable, this is otherwise known as stock dividend payable. Meaning, Burma Company is a corporation. Burma Company declared dividend, but the dividend declared is in the form of shares of stocks. That is why it is share dividend payable of 1 million pesos because we have two types of dividend that is the cash dividend and stock dividend or share dividend when you say cash dividend cash will be distributed to the shareholders when you say share dividend or stock dividend number of shares will be distributed to the shareholders next Claims for increase in wages and allowance by employees of the entity covered in a pending lawsuit for 100,000 pesos. So there is a case. Maybe this is a labor case, a labor issue. So the employees of Burma Company is claiming for an increase in wages. Maybe the management of Burma Company did not grant the request of the employees. That is why the employees filed a labor case in court and that claim for the increase in wages and allowances amounted to 400,000 pesos. Next, estimated expenses in redeeming price coupons presented by customers, 600,000 pesos. These coupons is part of the sales promotion of the company. This is very common among companies distributing products to the customers. This is a promo to increase the sales. So the company... They sell the product on the part of the customer, they acquire the product, and then there is a coupon. <coughs> when you receive the coupon, that means you are entitled to redeem that coupon in exchange for something coming from the company. So redemption may be in the form of cash or may be in the form of another product. So the estimated expenses in redeeming price coupons is 600,000 pesos. The question is, what total amount should be presented as current liabilities at year end? That is the question. The problem is asking for the total current liabilities and we have four choices here. Actually, the correct answer is letter A. 6,700,000 pesos. Let's proceed to the next slide 
so that we can see how we arrive at 6,700,000 pesos. So here is the solution for problem 1-8 Burma Company. Accounts payable, 4,100,000 pesos. Look at the computation. 4 million plus 100,000 pesos. What has been presented in the problem is the amount of 4 million according to the problem. The 100,000 pesos abnormal balance in one of the supplier's account. It is deducted the amount of 100,000 pesos. We have to add back the 100,000 pesos because offsetting is not allowed by the standard. We are not supposed to allow offsetting of negative balance. The subsidiary of the customer, of the supplier, has a debit balance. What is the possibility as we discuss? We may have an overpayment to the supplier. If we have an overpayment, that means we have a receivable from the supplier. The amount of our receivable from the supplier is 100,000 pesos. Therefore, we are not supposed to deduct 100,000 pesos. We have to add back the 100,000 pesos. So, the amount will be 4,100,000 pesos. The 100,000 pesos that we added back will be part of our current asset because that is a receivable from the supplier. Next, accrued expenses of 1,500,000 pesos. These accrued expenses are current liabilities because generally speaking, expenses already recorded but not yet paid are supposed to be paid within the current period. That is why 1,500,000 accrued expenses is part of the current liability. Next, credit balances of customers' accounts 500,000 pesos. We have to include the 500,000 pesos in our current liabilities. Why? Because we have an obligation to our customers to return 500,000 pesos to them. Because the nature of this customer's uh, credit balance is that it is an accounts receivable. Originally, this is an accounts receivable, but we may have an over collection from the customers if we have an over collection this should be included in our liabilities because we have the obligation to return the 500,000 to our customers and then the last one we have the estimated expenses in redeeming price coupons presented by customers Amounting to 600,000 pesos. Why is 600,000 pesos considered current liability? Because we have to pay the customers immediately. Once the coupons are presented to us, we have no choice but to pay them. That is why 600,000 is a current liability. This is an urgent payment to the customers. So the total current liabilities as we computed is 6,700,000 pesos and that is letter A. So here is our explanations why the following items are excluded in the computations because not all items enumerated in the problems are included 
and we have to justify the reason why we excluded those items. It is not as simply as identifying what items are included and what items are excluded. We have to make justifications to ourselves why we excluded these items in our computations. The first one is share dividend payable. It is not included because share dividends payable is part of the shareholders' equity in the presentation of statement of financial position. Again, this is not a liability. This is part of the shareholders' equity. This is the same as stock dividends distributable or share dividends distributable. Although there is a word payable in the account title, it is not a liability but rather part of the shareholders' equity. Why? Because when you distribute share dividends, that will be an addition to the shareholders' equity. That is why it is not a liability. Number two, claims for increase in wages and allowance by employees of the entity covered in a pending lawsuit. This is a contingent liability. We are not supposed to prepare debit credit entries for this kind of uh, claims from employees. This should be disclosed as part of the notes to financial statements. Only part of notes to financial statements the logic behind is that decision of the court is still pending hence the company is not supposed to recognize any amount by preparing journal entries there is no debit credit entries there is no specific amount there is no certainty about the decision of the court because the decision of the court was beyond our control this is the reason why this is not included in our current liability. This may be a liability in the future. That is why it is called contingent liability. And the best thing to do is to disclose this matter in the notes to financial statements. And these are the justifications. Why? we excluded these items in the computation. Now, let's proceed to the next problem. Problem 1-9 about GAR company, which disclosed the following liability account balances on December 31, 2020. So, the first item of GAR company is accounts payable of 1,900,000 pesos. We have bonds payable of 3,400,000 pesos. Premium on bonds payable of 200,000 pesos. Everybody understands what do you mean by premium on bonds payable. If you issued bonds payable and the issue price is greater, greater than the face amount of the bonds, you have a premium. And then, deferred tax liability of 400,000 pesos, meaning you deferred the payment of your tax. And then, dividends payable of 500,000 pesos. Income tax payable, 900,000 pesos. We are referring here of the uh, corporate income tax if GAR company is a corporation. And then, we have the notes payable due on January 31, 2021, 600,000 pesos. <clears throat> so, on the December 31, 2020, financial statements, what total amount should be reported as current liabilities? So, you have four choices here. Actually, the answer is letter C, 3,900,000 pesos. Let's proceed to the next slide 
so that we can see how we arrive at the answer of 3,900,000 pesos. So the first item that should be included as current liability is accounts payable of 1,900,000 pesos. Understandably, accounts payable are current liabilities because these are all to be settled within the current year. Next, we have income tax payable, 900,000. We have to pay the government immediately. That is why income tax payable is a current liability. should be settled immediately. Next, <coughs> we have the notes payable of 600,000 pesos. According to the problem, this is to be settled in 2021. And then we have dividends payable, 500,000 pesos. How can you distinguish this dividends payable in the previous problem of share dividends payable? This dividends payable of 500,000 pesos is a cash dividend payable. Always bear in mind that cash dividends payable are liabilities. It may be current. It may be non-current, but most of the time it is current because you have to pay the shareholders immediately. So, cash dividends payable are liabilities, while share dividends payable are not considered liability, but rather part of the shareholders' equity. So, the total current liabilities is 3 million 900,000 pesos and that is letter C under problem 1-9 prepared by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants adopted here in the Philippines. <clears throat> Next, we have to justify why we did not include the following items in our computation. So the first one is bond payable. Everybody knows that bonds payable are long-term liabilities with a minimum term of 5 years. That is why it is not included. Number 2. Premium on bonds payable is a contra-liability account and part of the bonds payable which is a long-term debt. It is a contra-liability. It is not supposed to be included in the current liabilities portion. And deferred tax liability is a long-term liability because the general perception is that we are not certain as to when can we settle the tax obligations. That is the general rule and the general perception. When you say deferred tax liability, automatically it will be classified as long-term liability. As I have said, we are not certain on the specific date on how can we settle this payment of tax which are postponed on a later date. <clears throat> Let's proceed to the last problem. Problem 1-10, also a problem prepared by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants but adapted here in the Philippines. So, ABLE Company had the following amounts of long-term debt outstanding on December 31, 2020. <clears throat> so, we have the first one, 10% notes payable, due 2021, 30,000 pesos. Understandably, this 30,000 pesos will be included as current liabilities. 11% notes payable due on 2023, 1,070,000 pesos. We have the 8% notes payable due in 11 equal annual principal payments plus interest beginning December 31, 2021. That is 1,100,000 pesos. And the last one, 7% guaranteed debentures due on 2022, 
<coughs> 1 million pesos. Later on, I will explain the meaning of guaranteed debentures. So, the total of these items is 3 million 200,000 pesos. The annual sinking fund requirement on the guaranteed debentures is 40,000 pesos per year. I think we have already discussed what do we mean by sinking fund. It has a relationship with the bond that we issued. Later on, I will discuss the sinking fund requirement. The question is, what total amount should be reported as current liabilities on December 31, 2020? So we have four choices here, but our answer is letter D as in dog, 130,000 pesos. Let's proceed to the next slide for us to see how did we arrive at the answer of 130,000 pesos. So here is the solution. The first item that we should include is the 14% notes payable of 30,000 pesos. <clears throat> Obviously, it is a current liability. And then, we have 8% notes payable. The amount that should be classified as current liability is only 100,000 pesos because the amount of the note is 1,100,000 payable in equal <coughs> annual installment 11 equal annual installment therefore the amount due in the current period is 100,000 pesos because 1,100,000 divided by 11 so the total current liabilities as required in the problem is 130,000 pesos and that is letter D as in dog. Now, let's justify why we did not include the following items in the computation. Number one, 11% notes payable. Obviously, this is a long-term liability because maturity date is 2023. So it is clearly stated in the problem. There is no need to analyze. This is a long-term liability because our cut-off date is December 31, 2020. Number 2, 8% notes payable. Only 100,000 is current as I have said a while ago because it will become due in 2021. All the rest that will be due beyond 2021 are non-current or 1 million pesos. So the amount of note is 1 million 100,000 pesos in accordance with the agreement. The company will pay this amount in 11 equal annual installment. Therefore, the amount due in 2021 which is now a current liability is 100,000 pesos. Pesos. That is why the total current liabilities here is only 130,000 pesos. The third item that we excluded is the 7% guaranteed debentures. These are long-term bonds. So what do you mean by guaranteed debentures? <clears throat> Guaranteed debentures are long-term bonds or a debt security that offers a second secondary guarantee that interest and principal payment will be made by a third party should the issuer default due to reasons such as insolvency or bankruptcy. Is it possible? that another party will guarantee the bonds issued by a corporation. Yes, this is possible. This is always happening if the company who issued bonds is within a conglomerate or group of companies. In some instances, the mother company will guarantee the bonds issued by 
the subsidiary. Subsidiaries are the different companies under the mother company, under a group of companies. So, this is happening if the mother company guarantees the bonds issued by the subsidiary or one subsidiary issued bonds and another subsidiary will guarantee the bonds issued by her sister company. So this is what we meant by guaranteed debentures. Another company guaranteed the bond issued by one company. So the investors are secured. The investors are given peace of mind that they will be paid on its maturity date. So this is a lesser risk debt instrument because of the guarantee clause. This type of bond is usually rare in the market and offers a higher market price because of the guaranteed payment. It is a risk-free debt instrument because as we all know, the payment of principal and interest is guaranteed by another company. And this is very rare in the market. If you can find if you can find this kind of bond in the market, it has a higher market price because of the guaranteed payment. Let's explain the annual sinking fund, and this has nothing to do with the computation of liabilities. It is the fund being accumulated for the payment of proceeds. Upon maturity of the bonds, it is a non-current asset. So this is an industry practice and also part of the accounting standard. Whenever you issue bond, there should be a bond sinking fund. If the bond that you issued is five years, is starting on year one, you will put up a bond sinking fund. You will accumulate fund for that particular account until the bond reach its maturity. The bond sinking fund will provide peace of mind to the issuer as well as with the investors that upon maturity payment of the principal will be assured or secured. So the problems the concepts and theories discussed in this lecture were all taken from the book written by Balix, Peralta, and Balix entitled Intermediate Accounting. Also, the definition of debenture, the guaranteed debenture, was taken from investopedia.com. Explanations, examples, and solutions to the problems in italics are provided by the lecturer. Again, thank you very much. This is the end of the lecture as far as liabilities are concerned and always bear with us because uh, uh, the pacing in online lectures is quite slow as compared to the regular class. We will continue discussing more on intermediate accounting. Just stay with us. And we assured everybody that the topics will be covered in preparation for your board exam. Thank you again and good evening.